In this chapter on the reactions of aromatic compounds, we are going to spend the most time on aromatic substitution reactions. And in principle, there are two types. And the first type we'll call electrophilic aromatic substitution. And the second type we will call nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And the name comes from what is actually doing the substituting. Now, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, we're reacting benzene with an electrophile. We'll find out it has to be a strong electrophile. And it will be replacing a hydrogen. Now, in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, we'll be reacting a benzene with a nucleophile, and it will be replacing a halogen, like chlorine. Uh, and so, based on what you're reacting benzene with determines its role. So, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, if we're reacting benzene with an electrophile, that means benzene's going to be a nucleophile. And in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, if we're reacting benzene with a nucleophile, that means benzene's going to be an electrophile. So, and this has profound implications, so we'll find out here in a sec that, uh, uh, you know, to make a nucleophile better, we actually want to attach electron donating groups to it. And these electron donating groups just make it more reactive. The nucleophile is the electron pair donor, and if it's got uh, electron donating groups attached to it, then it's even got a greater ability to donate electrons to be a nucleophile. So electron donating groups make electrophiles stronger, and therefore, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, electron donating groups are what we call activating groups, and it's specific to the type of reaction. Now, in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, on the other hand, benzene is now the electrophile, we said. And so it turns out electron donating groups actually make electrophiles weaker, not stronger. And so in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, all of a sudden now your electron donating groups become deactivating groups. And again, it's dependent on the type of reaction. So it turns out for nucleophilic aromatic substitution, it's electron withdrawing groups that actually increase the reactivity of electrophiles. And so it's electron withdrawing groups that are activating groups in nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Uh, they'd end up being deactivating activating group, groups in electrophilic aromatic substitution. So again, a couple big things here is, again, in electrophilic aromatic substitution, benzene's job is to be the nucleophile. That makes electron donating groups activating and electron withdrawing groups deactivating. Uh, and in this case, specifically, we're replacing a hydrogen with an electrophile. Now, in nucleophilic aromatic substitution, benzene's job is to be the electrophile. Uh, to make the electrophile stronger, electron withdrawing groups are activating groups, and electron donating groups are deactivating groups. Uh, and in this case, we are replacing a halogen with the nucleophile. Those are your big differences. Let's take a deeper look. So we're going to start by taking a look at the general mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution, sometimes called EAS for short here. And, and the general mechanism is just two steps. We'll find out it's a little more complex when we get into the specific reactions, but the general mechanism for EAS is just two steps, and it's going to be nucleophilic attack followed by proton transfer by deprotonation. So uh, in this case, it always just starts off with nucleophilic attack. Now, benzene's pretty stable, so it's not the greatest nucleophile in the world, so we have to have an amazing electrophile. We'll find out that every one of our electrophiles uh, has a positive charge somewhere along the way. And so in this case, the substitution here is going to be different than what we saw with SN1 and SN2. We're going to attach that electrophile to a carbon that already has a hydrogen, and so temporarily that carbon's going to be sp3 hybridized. Uh, this other carbon over here, though, that now lost a bond is a carbocation. Now, some people call this the sigma complex. So, and some people just refer to it as a carbocation, but it is definitely a resonant stabilized carbocation, and I'll worry about the other resonant structures here in a little bit. I don't want to, you know, make this too uh, confusing right off the bat, but it's just two steps. That's the first one. Uh, and the second one is just simply deprotonation. We're now going to have some base, and it depends on what reaction. I'll leave it generic here, but it depends on what reaction we're doing. We'll have a base come in, deprotonate, and that restores the aromaticity here. Uh, and so in this case, We got our aromaticity back, and now there's an electrophile uh, right where the hydrogen used to be. So first thing is, is we brought in the new electrophile and then out with the old hydrogen. So two-step process here for our substitution. Uh, it's not like SN2, which is all simultaneous. It's also not like SN1, where you get rid of the leaving group first and bring in the new group second. Here, we bring in the new group first and get rid of the leaving group, the hydrogen second. Uh, so different than the substitution reactions we've seen before. Uh, and notice again, just two steps, nucleophilic attack followed by proton transfer. Uh, I am still going to draw out the resonant structures here. So in this case, we do have a resonant stabilized carbocation. We can move these electrons right here. That'll put the carbocation right here. And then we can move these electrons right here. 
and get one more additional location. Cool, so carbocation, uh, in this case, shared by three different carbons in the ring. Uh, but the big principle governing this reaction, the reason it's not just another addition reaction like alkenes do, is that by simply doing a deprotonation, we get an aromatic product back. We restore aromaticity of the ring. So uh, it's a matter of stability. We're getting a very stable product back out. All right, so here's a table that just kind of shows all the different electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions and uh, just show how, you know, here we've got a bromine replacing a hydrogen, a chlorine replacing a hydrogen. This is a sulfonate group replacing a hydrogen. So we're always replacing a hydrogen. Uh, and then I show the electrophilic species. So we'll find out that, you know, here we've got Br2 and FeBr3. Well, the actual electrophile that forms is a combination of the two. And so every reaction, uh, the reagents themselves are going to react and form the electrophile in C2, we say. Uh, and you've got to know kind of how that happens. And that's usually part of the mechanism you're responsible for. So every one of these reactions is going to be two steps as far as the EAS part of it is concerned. But you're also going to have to know uh, how the electrophilic species is formed and who that electrophilic species is. And then also, what's the base involved in the reaction in step two uh, of the EAS mechanism? So we're going to kind of go through every single one of these.